moment where I give some serious literary reflection to tell you that we writers are not perfect people. <laughs> but when a reader's write in to uh, inform us that we have feet of clay, uh, prose is awful, and uh, all the mistakes, the spelling mistakes, and so on, um, all of which I'm willing to plead guilty to, because uh, I plead guilty but insane, because anyone who, who wants to be earn their living from writing must be insane. Um, I have to say that sometimes we are the victims and not the perpetrators. Publishers can embarrass us. Now, I'll say immediately, the publishers that are here tonight have <laughs> <laughs> we worked well together. <laughs> however, however, publishers, as I say, can embarrass us. And I remember, I've got some notes here just uh, to make sure I, I quote <laughs> correctly. Um, I remember one embarrassing publisher's catalogue. And I quote from it because it really strikes into my, uh, my core. And it said um, about a certain book, I won't tell you which one. Uh, this book contains a portrait of the author and other quaint illustrations. <laughs> Someone who probably just left 
university with a 2-2. Maybe I do her uh, an injustice. Maybe it was uh, a sort of three or four degree. <laughs> but anyway, um, when the manuscript came back to me, ooh, dear, it had been entirely rewritten. <laughs> and I'll sum up how it was rewritten. My 7th century Irish matchmaker had been changed into a marriage guidance counselor. <laughs> <laughs> I, I now expected Brother Adolf to emerge later on as a forensic apologist, <laughs> Sister Fidelma as a crime scene investigator. <laughs> that uh, either I needed a new copy editor or Fidel Merton needed a new publisher. <laughs> Thankfully, reason provoked. <laughs> Authors strike back. <laughs> but, uh, all right, publishers aren't always to, to blame. Uh, writers can uh, get carried away with their own pur purple prose. Indeed, uh, Robert Preston, don't know whether you've read a book called A Girl in the Club, but there's a, a marvellous slide there, and I, I'm going to quote it. Involuntarily, Max's eyes followed the length of a prostrate form, <laughs> then uttered a piercing scream. <laughs> <laughs> when you think about it, and so that it will make a good 1950s horror movie. The eyes that scream. <laughs> Someone asked me what my favourite slip of the uh, pen was, and it's still um, James Hadley Chase's uh, classic, No Orchids or It's Blandish, because that has a wonderful line. Riley sat at the back with Miss Blandish lying on his feet, biting his nails. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just to show even the great masters had their moments, uh, let's quote Charles Dickens' uh, Pickwick Papers. And I quote, Mr. Pickwick proceeded to put himself in his clothes and his clothes into his portmanteau. <laughs> and even Somerset Maugham, W. Somerset Maugham, in uh, his book, uh, The House Before Dinner, has this wonderful line, quote, He glanced at May. She wasn't knitting anymore, but sat there looking down at the floor with knitted brows. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, I, I can't avoid ending with a, a quote from the romantic novelist extraordinary Barbara Carter. And um, this is from a, a book called Love Will Triumph. And I quote, once again, for an instant, she raised those wonderful eyes to his. He studied the thickness of the lashes as they fell once more into her lap. <laughs> and 